What is good, everybody? And welcome back to This is Rocket League Sick Edition because Hootie and I decided that we would get sick at the exact same time. Like, we literally, or, or you got, you're like two days behind me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Little lag over here, but we're, you know, we're kind of in sync with it. I mean, the same week, so. Yeah, we felt bad, but literally, both of us, like, on Monday, we're like, all right, man, we got our episode. We're, like, we're both like, ugh, we feel like crap. <laughs> There's no shot we're recording, but we have so much to catch up on, catch you up on. Uh, we have what happened last week with NA, everything that went down with uh, the OCE. We have this weekend, RLCS has already started. If you're watching this video, it's already going. You've probably already, I mean, what? They've probably already missed the Friday, right, of, of EU. Uh, of what's going to be going on you'll you probably yeah. already have scores ready to go depending on when yeah. i get this out so we love you thank you for supporting us thank you for watching yes. thank you for your feedback i asked uh just to, on my youtube just like page just like what do you like about this show like what do you want to see what what changes we have some really fun cool things coming uh but i think the most important thing is we talk about what the heck is going on hoodie what is happening what happened last week where are we at? Because once again, we were playing that second winter, you know, the, the, yeah. what's it called? The winter cup. The and, cup, uh, yeah. that is, this is very telling for who's going to get in, who's not going to be at the, the regional, all that good stuff. So what do we got? Yes, you're exactly right. It is very telling that second regional is just, it's where it kind of separates the pack, especially in a EU where you got, you know, eight, nine, 10 teams fighting for five spots. Yeah. Um, and then when we get into some of these regions like OCE, Mina, APAC, Sam really comes down to the wire yeah. and kind of determines really what is probably going to happen. And so we're going to look first here at OCE. So you can see we have uh, Pioneers actually coming second in their group. Uh, we have Power Top their group we have ground zero coming second in their group this him police team i don't know a whole lot about them but i see people talking about them yeah uh, a lot of the players have a lot of respect for them so definitely a team to watch out for over in oce and then last but certainly not least we have merge esports coming out on top of their group right in group d and then we'll just glance down here at the bracket really quickly the three teams that we got to pay attention to in oce is ground zero gaming yep. power and pioneers mm -hmm. and those are your three top dogs i'm not saying they're never going to lose and i'm not saying there aren't other great teams but they but have those been. are your teams that you those, expect yeah those to those, make it there right yeah those teams well, have been kind of rocking Unfortunately, Power and Pioneers run into each other pretty early in this bracket, and Pioneers take them out. And John, we talked about it already. Power really had to go deep in the second regional. Because they needed in the points. first regional, they also kind of had a flub. So mm -hmm. they're probably not going to make it. In their overall points, it's not looking good for Power. So no. that's a that's a bummer. And, it's because I left, have, you know? It's because I left. I know. It's, it's what happened. As soon as John's gone. <laughs> it's been gone for a couple months. We do have Ground Zero getting their second W for a regional. And, and this is like a... I mean, this is a relatively new squad. You know, Super Locky was on Pioneers, mm -hmm. ended up being removed from that team, and now he's joined, joined Ground Zero, and they're two for two. I mean, they're really rocking and rolling. So. They're gonna be there. There's no they're shot, be there. right? They're like 100% guaranteed. Oh yeah. 100% oh, yeah. Ground Zero will be there. So there's one other OC spot that is open for the taking, and it's looking like it'll probably go to Pioneers, but yep. Pioneers would have to royally, right? Yes. Royally F up royally. For, for it then like not to go. fall out of groups or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd have to just be horrible. Like first round. First round, yeah. yeah. And so then, OCE, yeah. The, the chips are down. It's not totally solidified just yet. There's still some mathematical possibilities of other teams, but we're looking at Ground Zero and Pioneers being your major representatives. Um, Let's jump over to Mina. Kind of a similar situation. we got Falcons, Rule crazy. One. Those are our two teams that we know are towards the top. A few others that we need to keep eyes on is Empty Esports. Uh, excuse me, Empty uh, right here. We also have Vision Esports, great uh, great squads, and then Twisted Minds and Cola. Uh, I'm not saying those are the only good teams, but those are the teams that you see quite frequently in the Popping top up. four, yep. you know, taking Rule 1 and Falcons deep into series. But ultimately, Falcons are inevitable. Here they go again, 4-0, 4-1, 4-1. They take down Rule 1 in the finals yet again. So Falcons, two for two in MENA regionals. Rule 1, both uh, top two, both times. But they're going to have, if they want to make it to a major, they're going to have to end up taking down the Falcons. And right now, it's, they just haven't been able to do it. It's not happening. I mean, like, yeah, once again, this is a, a case of and, Falcons and will, gets one spot. They only get one. Yeah, which That's is right. crazy, man. It is crazy. I wish there was so many more. I mean, because so many teams deserve it, right? But yeah, uh, yeah. It is what it is. All right. And then That's let's right. let's talk about I'm I'm very excited about this because I watched a lot of Did NA you? Rocket League. Yeah, oh, yeah, over the weekend. So I was like, I, I just couldn't believe some some of the games that we watched. Like mm -hmm. I couldn't believe. I mean, even just looking at these groups, like Optic 0-3. Oh, for two regional straight, John. 0-3 
shooting for optic? Like, no, what? I uh, know. And we got Koi. Check this out. Koi has been in every regional this season, mm -hmm. and they have not won a series. Yeah. They finally got their first dub, and they <laughs> didn't stop there. They actually ended up making it to top eight. So Koi really turning things around right here. Yeah. Uh, Koi is the previous rogue roster. Aqua, Gyro, and they have recently added Knight. Uh, Knight's a very hot upcoming player as well. GNG at the top of Group A, no surprise. Yeah, probably the best team in North America, probably even the world at this point. Uh, Phase a top Group B, mm -hmm. G2 a, a top Group C, and then Group D is Complexity, who I am so proud of. I know, dude. All three O's. Like, look at this. That's crazy. <laughs> It is. It's absolutely crazy. We have uh, a crew being knocked out, Optic, Rebellion, and Ghost Gaming. Not too big of surprises. And now I want to talk about the first big surprise for me is M80 over Furia. Dude. M80 has been doing sweet. their thing, okay? And they deserve the respect and the credit that they are earning. You know, they're, they're showing it. It's not up for debate. They are playing good teams and beating good teams. But I am just shocked. I mean, John, look at these score lines. 4-0, 5-3. And I'm going to tell you all right now, Dude. I don't know if you're watching this, but they had a multi-goal lead mm -hmm. in every one of these games in the first minute, yeah. in the first 60 seconds. They were absolutely popping off. And, you know, I I don't, I think I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I even gave the prediction of Furia to the major. And I still do have a lot of hope for that team. I think they are so talented. Right. But right now, they're not playing well, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a full team thing, right? It, it doesn't matter how much talent each one of the three individuals has if they can't make it work together. And right now, they're not. So, yeah. but shout out to M80. I got to start giving them credit. They're fun, man. I mean, and they're fun to they watch. Are, they, are they are very are. fun to watch. Like, they are super I, fun. I, I, was, I found myself enjoying the uh, yeah. M80 Gen G they're, game. There are players that have been around for a while, too, John. I mean, Lion Blaze, we all know Lion Blaze, 1v1, CRL, legend of the scene. Yeah. Um, and then Percy and Kinsey, they've both been on some great RLCS rosters, maybe not towards the tip top, but they've been around for a while. So it's exciting to see them start to find some success and, and really start to create some buzz around their name. Now, next up, we got to take a look at this. <laughs> B1. <laughs> it's not fun. And it's not just, funny. It sucks for me on that. You just heard me say it though. Koi hasn't won a game until this regional. And here they are making it into the bracket and taking down V1, which is a team, John, that they're not making this major. They're not making it. And which I'm gonna is tell crazy you, to not see them at DreamHack. B, like when I don't, oh, it's so weird. V1, since picking up Beast Mode, has been at every international event. They've yep. been at every major, every world championship. And now here they are for the first time not making it. And they and lost, we yeah, Koi. We yeah. bounced down to the next one. Dig. Top four of the previous regional, and here they are losing to Pittsburgh Knights. Dude, NA has what? been flipped upside down. <laughs> I mean, we're going crazy. Last week was just so so chaotic. I, I was wa I was watching all these, and I'm like, what is going on? And then Space <laughs> Station beating NRG. <laughs> and look at this. But look at this. It's a reverse sweep. Just like the NRG V1 Koi game. Unbelievable. Yeah, Koi was a reverse sweep as well. Which is so a much excitement. Yeah. And this was, you know, we mentioned it. This was that regional that's really kind of separating teams. And like we said, yeah. B1, they're not making it. They're not going to make it at this point. I mean, if they win the regional, they still have to have help. You know what I mean? Like, they need so to win much. the regional, and they need this team to lose. And it's not going to happen. Team. So much it's would have happen. to happen. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, they're just, they've dug themselves such a deep hole that they really can't get out of it. Yeah. But we do have teams like M80 and Dignitas mm -hmm. who are in position to qualify for the major. And those are teams that haven't been at international events in a long time. I mean, M80, you know, that team didn't even exist. That org didn't even exist. You know, I that's know. a new org. Yeah. So, We've got Complexity, Gen G, and FaZe who are in fantastic positions. We've got G2s who, who is still in a pretty good position. And then from there it goes, you know, I think Dig, Space Station, M80. It's anyone's game, right? Um, like it's that. anyone's game. Yeah, that's right. It's anyone's we're game. We're talking so few points. It really just depends. And we'll, we'll take a quick look at the points up here and how they kind of spread out. Yeah. Um, you know, each round that you make it further is an extra point bump, right? So just making it into the regional, you're guaranteed three points. Yeah. So if you get knocked out in groups, you get your three. If you make it out of groups, you get an extra two points, right? You get that five instead of three. Huge. But then if you go one round further, Great. like Koi did, you know, that you win that that first match on Friday, mm -hmm. you get a three-point bump. So now you're at eight. And so, um, you know, looking at the spread, and I'll actually pull it up while we're talking about it. So you can see Dig is one point ahead, right? So if Dude. they make it one round <laughs> further and they get that two-point, that three-point jump, they're probably going to be safe, right? Oh. Or if you have something like Dig fall out in groups and M80 make it one round, for, right? So you're seeing these points so need, and how these... Sorry to interrupt you. You need Gen G, Complexity, Phase, and G2 are looking pretty good. Like, they're looking they're like... pretty good. They, they need to just not fully flub. So you're watching yep. those four teams making sure they're not fully messing up. But that fifth slot is like open. It's open. It's wide open. Open waters. That's right. Dang, so man. NA is going to be a lot of fun to watch. You definitely want to stay tuned for the following weekend. But let's get to what's going on right now as you're watching this video. Yes. And we wanted to quickly just show uh, what's going on in APAC and South America before we jump to Europe. 
but there are not as many teams competing for those top spots. Yeah. So we're just gonna show you the points and kind of give you a rundown of what is gonna, you know, what could potentially happen. We've got Elevate, who is your team that you expect to be there. Mm -hmm. They're kind of the top dogs. That's uh, Realize, Virtuoso, and Kami, fantastic squad, but they're tied up with Gaming Gladiators. Yep. Gaming Gladiators Who's on Gaming? has been in uh, top two for both events. That is Maxu, LCT, and OSM. And then you got Detonator, Burn, Mikan, and Lunatic, and they're right there on their heels. So these three teams, and they're typically, they're typically in that top four. Yeah. Uh, those three teams are the ones that are battling out in APAC. And APAC, just like Mina, one spot. One spot. Yeah. Tune in, see what's going on there. Damn, we got dude. South America. Now, South America does have two, just like OCE, mm -hmm. but we got three teams that are right there, ready to rock and roll. And, and Team Secret is the number. only one. Yeah. Team Secret's the only one that's made it to an international event, John. So these other two teams, you know they're hungry. They want to get there. They want to prove to everybody on an international stage how good they are and show everybody what's up. So South America as well is going to be a lot of fun. Tight race between some of these regions this weekend we need to Definitely have a moment of in. silence for uh nip dude. yeah nip unfortunate just uh, not, we'll take just dude. a just a, oh, a five second pause all right i, I feel much better <laughs> <laughs> shout out to nip <laughs> So, much right. better. so we got over here in Europe. Yeah, right. this is the one where we got so many teams. You know, there's no telling what's gonna happen. Lots of teams fighting for those five spots. We've got one team that's already locked. Carmen Corp. They're making it. 100%. It's locked. It's loaded. They there are is, the best of they are. EU They're fantastic. right now. They have won two regionals back to back. They're incredible. Yeah. But similar to NA, we have Oxygen. Liquid and Vitality, Vitality who are good. in yeah. kind of a, a good spot together, right? The all three at 24 points. Right. They've got like a one round lead over German Amigos. And so we'll see how things shake out. It's going to be group stage, just like always. we got Group A, Carmi Corp, German Amigos, uh, Solary. Group B, Moist G1, BDS, Tundra. Group C is Liquid, Vitality, Williams Resolve, and Fufax Stop. Ooh, Fufax. And then Group D is Oxygen, Quadrant, Sonics, and Monaco. You know, from there, I mean, I mean it's really just, a, it's up for grabs. This is what's going on this weekend. Obviously, just like all these other regionals, the team that is at the bottom will be eliminated straight from groups. They're only going to get three points. If you are second or third place in groups, you will be stuck into round number one, which happens on Friday. If you get eliminated there, you can get a total of five points. And then um, quarterfinals forward is all of the weekend matches. And that's where you start to get those bigger points jump jumps each round. If you are one of these squads right here, You've got to make it to the weekend. You have you know, to. If you, okay. That's a that's a great thing to say. If you see one of those teams not make it to the weekend, yep. they are 100% not going to regional. That's right. 100% they're out. they're out, sadly. Every team that you see below, who do you think could pull it off? Like maybe. I don't think, I don't think you can go any further than Williams. Yeah. I mean, BDS, if they if they win the regional, they still need help. Yeah, yeah. So and, like, and, and, there could be a miracle, but I would say anyone under Williams resolve is you will not be seeing them if you are going uh, to San Diego, to the right. dream hack, to the the regional um yep. sadly which is crazy because like bds I know. like I know. even World just Champions. looking it, it would be so weird if there's not a moist like if moist doesn't make know. it like i mean i i love the idea of seeing german amigos there though like i love that i, I love like g1 would be crazy quad like it's cool to see some of these squads but dude this weekend is like this is it this is this the, is it. This the third one this determines all of it the following weekend will be na and that's their third one so like john said this is it this is for everything right here all the pressure's on you know it doesn't matter what you did in the first two regions whether you played well, put yourself in a good spot, or you didn't do so well, whatever, it doesn't matter. All comes down to this. You got to make it as far as you can in this event. Yeah. And that's really what it boils down to. Like we, we showed you the point spread earlier, three, five, eight, 12, 16, 20. And so, you know, one more time, we'll pop it up here. Army Corp is already locked. So there's yeah. only four spots left in Europe. And there are four teams that have a pretty sizable lead on everyone else. So now can I ask um, you a question, Hootie? Sure. When, cause we've never gotten this far. We, we weren't doing these episodes then. Uh, right. When we get this right, is there a benefit to being in third place over fifth place in from EU going into regionals? Sure. Is yeah. is there a whole seeding through that, like who you get paired mm -hmm. up with when you get to regional? John, that's a great question, and we can actually take a look at it right here. So there is seeding, and mm. it really is, um, you know, it kind of depends on this region's former performances. So last event. We had Sam in the top four. So right. now your Sam seeding is going to get a little bit better. Does that make sense? Gotcha. So, right? So yeah, as your region performs, yeah. well, it's not even about the specific team, but as your region performs better or worse, your seeding is going to kind of be dictated by that. So it is so, important. Super important. It is actually. important. That's right. And you can kind of see here how things are spread out. And group A is going to be NA1, NA3, SAM2, EU5, Group B, EU1, EU4, so on and so forth. I don't uh, need to read them cool. all off. You can check them out on the screen. But you ask that question, and here's the problem. Sometimes your better teams have a couple of rough regionals and end up 
as the fifth seed, right? That's so what I was going to really say, just, dude. <laughs> you really just don't know. And I think the best strategy for any of these teams is just you try to get as many points as you can. You want to be as high seeded as possible. Right. Just give yourself the best chance. And, you know, if that ends up, you know, placing you against a team that is probably under seeded, what can you do? Right. What can you do? You got to you got to give yourself the best chance possible. And Especially then, when you're in a stage like this with groups. Right. Because you've got extra chances, right? It's not just straight up double elim or you lose that match and mm -hmm. boom, you're in the lower bracket. Right. Groups, you got a little bit of time to get warmed up. I, I would even, you know, there are some arguments of like being in a tougher group is actually better right right kind of prepare you for that playoff bracket get your team warmed up and so i, I don't know i mean I, is there a strategy to it maybe uh but i think most of these teams probably just try to get, uh, garner as many points as they possibly can yeah they're just playing it out that's so yeah. cool too so hoodie if there's like a if there's a tie say say it's like 24 yeah. points 24 points for third and fourth they play a tiebreaker for that right uh they don't do that that's okay. a great question actually they don't play a tiebreaker moving into the major i don't have the answer off the top of my head i would have to look it up no it's fine we as... can leave it to the the audience or maybe yeah, there's we'll someone let the audience tell us. <laughs> maybe you could let us know what they do i'm sure they pull from like most goals or something or do they pull it, yeah something? it's something along those lines like most maybe wins um, in a maybe it, it may be something along the lines of like highest average performance over the last three events something like that I, i'm okay, not exactly cool. sure cool. what it may be to determine the only time that we'll get a tiebreaker moving into the major is if you have like two or three teams tied for fifth in points right because we've got to figure out who is that fifth team that we're taking with us um as far as seeding though they don't do a tiebreaker to play it out right um at least not that i'm aware of i think that there's just some other way to break that tie through previous performances final question uh -huh. are we getting a carmine corp gen g battle finale or is there going to be some <laughs> flipping of tables and so there's gonna be a flipping of tables yeah. we're never gonna get what we want john we're not gonna get it you know we need it and i tweeted something out like if we don't get k corp and gen g at, as a finals we riot and we're not gonna get it. it's just no. not gonna happen <laughs> some some team is gonna go on a hot streak or or one of the you know Gingy. somebody's gonna get sick you know something's no. gonna happen and just ruin it for the you know for the culture because we <laughs> we need it man they're so dominant in each of their own regions i'll tell you what i would be satisfied even if it's not the finals yeah you know just even to if they see run them some, battle yes so we can at I least say run into each other in a playoff bracket yeah. something because yeah. they are so good and i want to see them battle it out but before we go yeah. we're talking about these points um, the, the regionals, per, excuse me, the regions performances at the majors and how that shakes out. Mm -hmm. We'll just give you a quick peek forward at Worlds and how this kind of determines things. So as of right now, what I have up on the screen here is World Region Spots. Right. So what this means is you have eight teams around the world that are guaranteed to go straight to the World Championship. And that is determined by each region's performance at the three majors, oh. okay? So in a one, one major, Number one yeah. in the fall, right? Gen G was major winners. Yep. So they got that number one seed. They got the most points possible. Gotcha. And then we had an EU team in second. And then we had that SAM team, right? Yeah. They were top four, Team Secret. So there they are with 18 points. We had an NA team top four um, with 18 points. Oh, so, so this is the points goes. for Worlds. For Worlds. And this is not a specific team. This is that region. So what this region. means, all right? Let me just give a quick scenario what this means. If we played Worlds tomorrow, yeah, we would have one, two, three four four european teams that go straight to worlds right okay and then europe gets an automatic three spots actually you can see it here they get an automatic three spots for the wild card okay cool and so the wild card is 16 teams eight of those will move forward to match up against these eight, eight. in the actual world championship that's so cool and so you can earn your region more teams and more representation at the world championship right. through good performances throughout the season. What I mean by that is Europe has four teams right here in the top eight, which means one, two, three, four would auto qualify straight to the world championship automatically. But they would get those three and they would bring these three along to the wild card. That's really right? cool. So if NA in this major was to outperform and then snag that fourth spot, or if OCE was to outperform and jump into that top eight, they could bring an Automatically. extra team from their region. Exactly. So there's regional pride in these majors. Yeah. You want your fellow Europeans, your fellow uh, South Americans, your fellow North, whatever it may be, whatever region you're representing, you want them to perform well at these majors because as they perform better, it's dragging more teams from your region Opens to the slot. world championship. So if there's any region that you're from, or even if you're not from there and you're cheering for them, you got some favorite player, favorite teams there, yeah. you want them to do as best as they possibly can at these majors to bring more teams with them. Um, trying to poke into this top eight 
and get spots at the World Championship. I love um, but it. It's just a quick note that I wanted to make because we're walking into this major. Like you said, we hadn't started the show last time, but that's something to keep in mind as you're watching these teams perform. It's a lot of fun when you start to think about, wait a second. Yeah, dude. That fourth place team from Europe doing just a one round better might actually bring G1 to the World Championship. Whereas if they didn't perform that well, then maybe yeah. G1 would have missed. Wild so yep. just one more thing to keep in mind as Woo! you're watching this RLCS stuff. There's a lot, it's very complex, but I think it makes it good. It makes it very competitive, has, holds a lot of uh, competitive integrity. And you know, with all these extra layers to the competition, I think it, it just provides a lot of fun to, uh, you know, to talk about and to follow and to see what's going on. Um, especially when we, once we get into that final leg of the season, that spring split, and you yes. start thinking about who is going to be at Worlds, who is going to be our new top dog. So y'all think about that this weekend as you're figuring out what teams are going to make it to the major. Give me a lot of fun, John. We got two weeks of the final regional of the winter split. We're in that third Sit, we're in the dude. home stretch. We are. We are. Thank you all so much for joining us. As always, I hope this is giving you a better understanding because, I, like I said, I'm still learning. But I finally I am. I'm telling you when I'm watching. No, you are. You are a senpai, dude. You are. <laughs> you know, like I, like when I'm watching these now, though, it I, truthfully for me, I don't know for any of you. It is so much more fun just to be like, oh, no, if they lose, they're yeah. going to be knocked out and they're not going to be able to play. They have a lot riding on this game. And like, then right. seeing like certain teams win and it's like he used to be on that team. Like, it's just <laughs> so much more fun. So thank you for joining us on this ride, everybody. Thank you, Hootie, uh, for, you know, we got a little sick, but like, you know, we're here. We're here. We're, we're showing rocking. up and uh, we will see you all uh, after the weekend to talk about what went down and, and what will be next. So peace out, everyone. Later.